Hey guys, Brent here from The Six Show and today I've got a very special episode. I've got my special video editor and we're in Scotland in beautiful Scottish weather. His name's Russell Boyd and he's an excellent video editor. He's been cutting all the six shows for the last year and a bit and he's been working with me for about three years. The Six Show. Share, inspire, create.com. Share. How are you doing, Russell? I'm doing great. This is just how I love Scotland. And if you come to our country, this is what you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with a special episode, Russell, um, can you share something with us? Yeah, um, sure. Well, what I'd like to talk to. I got into the whole video animation editing business because I used to play games. I used to fly World War II flight sims. Yeah. And when I was in my 30s, I thought it was cool to have a cool nickname which uh, now is a bit childish <laughs> in your 50s. And unfortunately, you can't change it because most of my following in the amateur world all know me as, and it's uh, it's Joe 90. Joe 90. So what does Joe 90 mean? Well, Joe 90, for those who might remember, it's the old Thunderbird series, the old uh, um, Jerry Anderson animation. He was a small 12-year-old boy puppet who had great powers when he put on a pair of special glasses and I thought he was cool but it's everyone now calls me Joe 90 and it doesn't quite suit a 50 year old man <laughs> in one line. Oh well, maybe when you turn 90 it'll suit you. I never thought of that yeah <laughs> yeah good one yes. Yeah. Awesome so so the, the Joe 90 is a guy who he put on glasses and he would assume someone else's powers right? Yeah it's like every boy's dream when you're young that you can get special powers to be a secret agent or fly planes or uh, be a rocket scientist just by putting on special power glasses. And I used to wear specs at school, so I thought I was Joe 90 at school as well. Awesome. Well, thank you for that share, Russell. And um, actually, before we jump to the uh, Inspire a uh, little bit, maybe you can talk a little bit about where we are and the significance of the background. Oh, yeah. well, sure. Well, if you can just about make out in the distance, it's a bit wet today is the Wallace Monument. You've heard of William Wallace, uh, one of our national heroes. And he fought and beat the English right behind us at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. This isn't the original bridge uh, back from the 13th century, but the, the bridge was here where he used tactics because he didn't have a great army. Yeah. Uh, and he managed to trap the English in this area in the bogs and the land, and it's called the Battle of Stirling Bridge. So you've got both the Wallace Monument up in the hill overlooking the battlefield. Yeah. So if anyone's watched Braveheart, this is where they... Uh, they mooned the British, right? They they they, they threw their kilts <laughs> yeah, up in the front and, and the back, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the front too. And one one guy got the arrow right in here because he yeah. was just doing it a bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where it all happened, guys. This is where the the, the Battle of uh, Stirling Bridge. Bridge happened, and uh, William Wallace uh, defeated the English, yes. uh, surprisingly enough. And I think they were way outnumbered, right? Yeah, outnumbered and outclassed by their... They were, they were just common men, they weren't noble men, they weren't knights, they were just the, the, the peasants of Scotland rebelling against the nobles. And the nobles of Scotland didn't even support them, uh, not until later when Robert the Bruce came in to support William Wallace. But this was the, the People's Rebellion of Scotland, led by William Wallace. Awesome, and just so you know, we actually watched Braveheart the night before we came and checked out all these monuments and things. So, man, I'm loving the Scottish weather. Yeah, we, we, we watched it. It had been a long journey for Brent, and uh, there was cries of snoring from the back couch. <laughs> but we, me and Wes watched it. <laughs> Jet lag. Hey, what can what can you do? Inspire. All right. So, uh, Russell, inspire us with a couple of your amazing creations. Okay. Well, one of the ways I got into video animation was making films from games, and it was from World War Two flight sim. So this picture, which I'll uh, bring up and show you just now, is of four Spitfires from 92 Squadron. They're flying over the desert in North Africa. And hopefully you'll see in this picture, you get complete control of the lighting and the camera angle and whatever you want to do. You can put the, the objects that you're filming, in this case, so it's Spitfires, you can fly them through the sky. And by aligning that with the, the, um, the scripts of the, the game, you can get almost any picture you want. So it's down to your creativity and how you want to line it up and line up the lighting. I mean, lots of folk do take pictures of games, but there's a difference between just taking a picture of something in a game and getting the camera angles, the, the lighting right within the game. I think that's where, that's where the skill comes into it. And anybody who wants to get ahead in 
the, the animation business has to learn, I think, that skill to get the lighting right and not just uh, have to take a first snap. Same as holiday snaps, you can go out and take a picture. But if you've positioned things right, then you get the, the quality. So hopefully you'll see in this picture how I've managed to get the lighting right over the, the Spitfires and also set the time of day to dusk so the, the whole desert is covered with... Um, Sorry for the wind. <laughs> so you can hear it. I'm just hoping that the camera doesn't blow over over there. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, you get the atmosphere of the dusk in the morning to light, and you don't hopefully not even see it as a game. It's just a beautiful picture. Yeah. So it's very similar to uh, photography. Obviously, you got to consider the light. You got to consider the composition of how you're positioning the, the fighter jets, uh, the Spitfires. You got to look at the background. I mean, it's it's basically if you can create great images through these uh, animated games, you can become a great photographer too. It's, it's, it's the same thing, really. Yeah, well, it's like the old question, what do you have to be first to be a good uh, video maker? Do you have to be a good photographer or, or, or good at cutting? Yeah. I think you need both skills, but you, unless you understand the rules of composition, yeah. you'll never be a good videographer. Yeah. So, and for me, it was photography first before I got into videography. Yeah. Uh, so they both work definitely hand in hand. Yeah. And that's why I've chosen Russell to cut all our videos because he knows all the stuff and he's excellent at it. So as you guys have probably seen in all the six shows and all the other videos also, the, the, the um, video lessons, the photography lessons that we got. I mean, how many videos have you cut for me, Russell? Oh, include all the courses and the, when you went did the touring and the landscape courses, all them. There's, there's hundreds now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the greatest fun ones are when it's Brett's out on location doing the multiple camera set up and and pulling it all together with the soundtracks and just when you see the obviously been a hard time out on location and it's a long time setting things up it's a real challenge and it's a great challenge to bring all that all down just to a few minutes with fast cuts fast action and and making the lesson make sense that way yeah. totally and one of the reasons that i actually send all my videos to russell to cut is because he's not emotionally involved in actually capturing the footage so if i was actually cutting it and I know how difficult it was to capture a scene. There's no way I could cut it out. Like, uh, but you may need to cut it out to actually make a good lesson. Okay. And that's where you come in. So you'll say, okay, yeah, the scene's not the best. I'm, I'm just going to leave it out. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I, I'll give you one quick example of that, of Spielberg when he was making Jaws. Yeah. They spent out days trying to get the shark scene. Yeah. And when he took all that back to the editor, the editor went, that shark looks like a big rubber plastic model. <laughs> and he was determined to get, keep the shark in as much as... But the more you see the shark, the worst. The editor says, uh, Stephen, that's going. That's getting cut. Yeah. You're going to get one second of that shark. And uh, and that was great. You, if you've seen the film, the, that cut was great. If you'd seen the whole shark and its beauty, it would have been... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> what a stupid film. It wouldn't have made it, yeah. 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 So it's, it's cutting the things out that you like as a director. And the editor says, nah, it's got to go. Yeah, and that's similar to landscape photography or even portrait photography. Sometimes you've got to move around and actually take and actually take things out of the image. You know, like instead of including things, you've got to take things out to make it a stronger image. Yes. So, yeah, perfect. All right, Russell, so inspire us with another one of your amazing images. Okay, so when, when I realized that I was getting some following in flight sims, I started shooting in a virtual world called Second Life uh, because I met up with a producer from New York and she works for a studio called Pookie Media and she explained well there's actually you can make money with these animations so we started shooting a lot in there that's a complete different way of shooting to uh, shooting planes you're shooting people but it's it's 3d models of people uh, and this image here is one we did for a science fiction series uh, called the time travelers yeah. uh, and part of their adventure they went up to space and they were trying to rescue solar panels from uh, the EO Zanzibar uh, and so of course you couldn't make that film yeah. if you're just amateurs but in a virtual world you can go anywhere you want and this virtual world called Second Life there's this almost limitless places you can go and shoot so we found these satellites up in Second Life and, and then all I had to do was then chroma key in a picture of the earth in the background yeah. And then we could fly spaceships. And this image is just a static picture. But you can imagine all these solar panels are rotating as well. And the spaceships flying through it too. Uh, but hopefully you'll see in the image just what you can do. It, it's limitless. If you've got an idea to do something, you go into a virtual world, like Second Life, you can shoot anything you want there. Yeah. Awesome. We'll have to see how this audio actually comes out with this mic, with all this wind. And guys, I love Second Life. I was actually um, watching Russell create another video, um, a commercial video, an advert 
for a pharmaceutical company and he was controlling three characters on two screens with two keyboards and, uh, and he was filming at the same time on this computer at different angles and um, you know, putting in the audio, the people actually talking. It's, it's fascinating, Second World. And if you haven't been into Second World, the way uh, Russell explained it to me is people build things in a, in a virtual world and you can actually go in there and actually crawl through the things that they've built. And I saw one where they had the, um, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Someone built the Golden Gate Bridge in a virtual world and you can actually go to the Golden Gate Bridge, explore it and, and film around it. It's just amazing. Yeah, sure. And I'll come to that next in the create section. I'll explain just how you can actually go in and do some okay. some setup in there too. Right. But yeah, I mean, check it. It's, it's free to use, Second uh, second Life, uh, but there's lots of virtual worlds and it's it's got the advantage over 3D programs in that all the assets are there. Okay. You don't have to create the, the Golden Great Bridge. You go and someone's, think of anything, someone's bound to have made it. Create. All right, Russell, so show us how you create all this great stuff in uh, in Second Life. Right, okay, so I'm going to take you into this virtual world and just explain how I actually use a camera in Second Life and how, not only how to use a camera and all the usual, you know, the f-stop and the shutter speed and depth of field, you actually also have full control over the lighting, uh, what time of day you want, uh, the atmosphere, and the, so it's, it's a double creative process in that one. You don't have to wait for the light weather. So I'm going to show you a short example of doing that in one of the uh, stunning areas of Second Life. So you can see, if you understand photography, you'll make the best pictures in Second Life. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Russell. Hi, and so here I am coming to you from the much drier climate of the virtual world that is called Second Life. And I'm going to show you how I use this world to capture some stunning images and also I make animations in this world as well. First let me introduce myself. Uh, this is my avatar called Russell. Obviously you can make yourself look like anything you want. I made myself a little bit younger, thinner and handsomer. But as you can see in this world there are amazing locations already created by enthusiasts and role-playing gamers. You may have guessed that this location is a virtual recreation of Paris. And look over my shoulder up to here and we'll see, of course, the Eiffel Tower painstakingly created in here. And just behind that is the Sean's Elysee. Now this sim has actually been created as if it was uh, the 1900s. So all the objects in here, like you'll see this car over here, are of the early 20th century. Okay, so anyway, let's see if I can show you another location. We'll take some pictures. Then I'll bring up the menu and we can jump to a different location. And this place we are going to go to a futuristic world which is called uh, Araxis. So let's head over here. We can teleport anywhere we want to go. And this one is quite a bit different. Let me just switch this off and turn around and you'll see an amazing sci-fi city starting to render in. And we already have somebody here waiting to talk to us. This is actually another avatar, uh, which I am also controlling from a separate computer. And we're going to use this one as a model. So let's first of all look at what we can do with the camera. I'll bring up the menu and I'll move the camera. As you can see the little magnifying glass, let's me focus the camera and move it to anything I want to see. Right, now before you take your picture, you can choose the environment you want and you can edit the lighting as I mentioned. So let's have a look at the sky preset. I've got a few demos here. Let's go to demo two. That's a bit more atmospheric, but this is sci-fi and futuristic. Let's go for a much darker look. There we go, that's better. And we can also adjust the direction of the sun just by moving the slider, the east angle. Let's bring that right around until it's on our model's face and get some, get some shadows there too. Okay, so once you're happy with your environment, 
you can start taking your picture or start filming. But you can also change your camera. Yeah, uh, now let me just get the focus oh, once again on the face of our model. And you can choose wide angle or you can zoom right in with the telephoto lens. Let's bring that up a little higher. If you want to get uh bring that background really into soft focus and get the telephoto effect. Now once you've chosen your camera lens you can also play with the depth of field as you would normally. So let's have a look at the preferences. I'll bring that over to the side a bit. You notice the depth of field is changing there. It depends what the camera is looking at. And I just clicked on something <laughs> way in the distance. Let's bring the camera back to this avatar who's called Sugar Inventor. Okay, so as normal, you can change your f-stop Take that right up and close down your lens and you can bring the background into focus if you want. Or you can take it right down to a very wide f-stop. So let's just leave that uh, about f7. We can change our focal length and field of view too if we want. And then we try bring the camera back out to a wider lens. And the last thing you have to do, you, will, you can take your picture, but if you're going to be animating this, you can then animate your character. And I've got a little animation loaded up here. Let's just play that and see what she does. There we go. And that's a short demonstration of taking videos and pictures in Second Life. Awesome, guys. Well, that was a great interview with Russell. And I've got Johnny here next to me from hey, Australia. Gosh, bro. <laughs> Where's my bell, man? Who are man? <laughs> This is my show today, Johnny. How's it going, mate? <laughs> and just so you know, we call Russell Rusty. Um, and we actually, in all the outtakes on the, on the videos, we actually send a message to him every video. We say, hey, Rusty, how are you doing in Scotland? <laughs> so I'm going to send the back the love to Johnny for all the love he sends to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a nickname for you, but I can't see it on here because it's far too rude. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Well, that, that was another great, uh, sick show. And um, thank you, Russell, for um, you know having me over. I've been staying with Russell. I've, I've come all the way to Scotland to come meet Russell in real life. We've been working together for close to three years, and I had to come and check out all this, this beautiful place and experience this beautiful Scottish weather and uh and see the you know the wallace monument and and just kind of hang with uh, russell and you know exchange ideas so that's awesome anything else you want to say to the audience uh before we sign off no it's great i mean just to keep getting involved in the sick show um uh, i i'm watching what you're doing because it's great and it's like i get free entry to the sick show because i see all these things what's going on and what i've learned from this show and other shows that i edit as well uh, it's fascinating and a great way. Uh, I would love to get back into photography. In fact, I've started taking a lot more pictures now over the past few years uh, since I've been doing these. So it's inspired me to take pictures and just enjoy uh, photography. So keep being inspired. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Russell, and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Bye. To find out more, go to shareinspirecreate.com.